Want to learn how to make a bookcase style shop cabinet without making mistakes? I put together some easy to follow rules and methods for doing this to avoid common mistakes that are too easy to make. Believe me, I've made them. Thanks. Enjoy. Okay, Jim Vanderskaff, Down East Wood Art. Welcome to my shop. Uh, today we want to talk about a foolproof method for designing and building a shop cabinet. This is a book style type cabinet. This is a continuation of a video we made previously when uh, we were talking about putting these cabinets together. And I finished these all off. As you can see, I made uh, doors with uh, shelves on the inside, but they're all made in the same manner. And this has cleaned up my entire set of, of uh, mineral spirits and varnishes and finish and glue and nails and screws and everything like that. So <clears throat> that worked out well. And these are just little magnetic catches on the doors. And now I can look at what I made as opposed to all the things that I made it with. So, <clears throat> what I want to do now is show you um, what a system <clears throat> is to uh, make uh, a cabinet just like this. And uh, we'll indicate all the, we'll talk about all the pieces to it. And you can see how it goes together and how it was created and how it was designed. All right, so what are we talking about? We're talking about, this is uh, just a standard bookshelf cabinet. And for simplicity, I've just chosen some dimensions. And you can, with these formulas, you can choose your dimensions for your cabinet and then plug this in and you'll get the same results. But this one is just 12 inches wide, it's five inches deep, and it's 18 inches tall. And those are just the outside dimensions. So what I'm going to do to make this is illustrate all the pieces. All the pieces have been pre-cut and uh, the reason they've been pre-cut is there's no reason for you to watch me cut out pieces, but I want to tell you uh, how I did that and using the formulas, then you can replace this method yourself. So these are the shelves, and I'll just illustrate how they go in place. All the little marks on here are where the dados are going to be cut. And if you do a cabinet for the first time, I recommend that you do that. You make the marks exactly where you want them to go. And if you do that, the tendency will be to reduce your mistakes. So the sides just go up like this. And now you say, well, Jim, your uh, shelves are too, too high. Well, that's true for the moment, but they're just a quarter of an inch high and that's how deep the dado is. And the dado, remember, if you look on the inside is cut right here and for all these shelves. Then you're, you're going to say, well, Jim, the cabinet you're making is too wide. And at the moment, you're right because it's 12 and a half inches. But remember that each one of these pieces is datoed in exactly a quarter of an inch all the way. So this piece moves in a quarter of an inch. The one on the other side moves in a quarter of an inch, etc. And it all becomes just exactly 12 inches wide. So um, the formulas then, now that you understand how these, how this system is used, and again, this is for half inch plywood. I use Baltic birch, and there's a reason for that. Half inch plywood with quarter inch uh, dados or rabbits uh, cut into the pieces here with a data blade. And so if you do that, then here are your formulas. This is for cutting the pieces, not for cutting the dados. <clears throat> the back piece is 12 inch. Uh, the width is 12 inches minus a quarter minus a quarter equals 11 and a half. Why? Because it has the thickness of a quarter of an inch 
on the side pieces to make it 12 on each side. The sides are exactly 5 inches wide, 18 inches tall. The shells are 5 inches minus a quarter. Why 5 inches minus a quarter? Well, because uh, they go into the back piece one quarter of an inch so if, anyway we got that we got that right it's five minus a quarter and then 12 inches minus a quarter and a quarter to be 11 and a half so let's just measure those that's four and three quarters and that's 11 and a half just like the formula says so you can use that and what we'll do next is cut all these dados and you can see then how it goes together. What I've got here is a method that I'll show you how to cut them uh, uniformly. If you look at the distance between the shelves, it's exactly five inches, okay? So we use this five inch piece plus a spacer for the width of the dado, and I'll show you how we do that in just a minute. So what I'm gonna do now is set up and take out the regular saw blade, take the power cord off, take this insert out, okay, power cord is all the way off, and we'll take the data blade, the regular saw blade out. Be careful when you do this, it's easy to jam your hand against that saw blade. So you're just raising it all the way up because it makes it easier to get at the nut. Uh, if you look, uh, I'll just show you what this looks like on the inside. If you look over here, Alex, you can see right down here, there's a very short, narrow arbor on here. And I never put more than a half an inch set of stacked dados in there because it's just not, saw's not designed for that purpose. I'll also take out the riving knife. And then we make sure that we put that back in because that's a safety feature uh, for this saw, for all saws. So move this out of the way. Then this is what we use. We use these stack dados. And what we're going to do is make, take four pieces of stack dado because this is half an inch and these are uh, an eighth of an inch each. And so we'll combine them. <coughs> and in doing so, we get a half an inch cut. Exactly. I've got these already preset. And let me just show you what they are. One blade on the, out, on the inside goes in. Then you've got these cutters that go on. Then you've got another cutter. All of these, like I said, are an eighth inch wide. And then finally the outer piece. Now when you line up these inside cutter blades, make sure that you don't get them on <coughs> a uh, outside cutter piece because you'll just get an uh, inaccurate cut. Like I say, I never use more than half an inch and I'm only cutting out a quarter of an inch deep in the dado. So, now you don't have to get this over tight, just tight enough. Now the next thing is, we'll take another insert, and I have an insert that I've made that's a, exactly a half an inch wide, and we'll put that in place. Just 
slips over that. And now we're going to set that to be a quarter of an inch deep. There's exactly a quarter. Still got the blade turned off. Okay. So now that's all set. We plug our saw back in. And uh, I'm going to have you turn on the, the uh, let me talk a little bit about how to set this up. Uh, so these are all the pieces that I need to cut. And as you can see, we've got pieces that are right next to the edge and in a couple of different locations. So we want to cut those all at once. So you can see that the dado blade is going to be very close to the fence. So there's a technique that we use, and that is to put a sacrificial fence in place. And that's just nothing more than a piece of wood with, um, with the ability that if we cut into it, we're not going to do any harm to our fence. And so we just lock that in place with clamps. Hold on, it's getting a little warm in here. I'm going to turn this off. Okay, so like I say, we lock it in place with our clamps. And then that's, of course, above the wood, so there's no problem. All right, so now move this over. And now we don't have to worry about that blade being right next to the fence because it's a sacrificial, it's just wood. So I draw it in close, lock it in place. <clears throat> so now... What I want to do is use some safety techniques. And I'll just demo those because you're not going to be able to hear me while I'm talking uh, with the blade on because it's noisy. Anyway, this is a wonderful little device that allows you to press down hard on a board while you move it through. And I'll use those in both cases. Uh, on these boards, uh, what I'm going to do when I'm just cutting the edge is I'll put my miter gauge in and uh, slide them through just to hold them in place in a uniform way so I hold them against the fence properly. So as long as I got that here, I'm set up to do that. Let's start making the cuts. Flip the vacuum and we're off.
right, now we'll see it all to go together. This, uh, these boards go in the slots. This is just that data width without any spacers is just right for exactly half an inch. So everything goes in place. I'll slide that one in later. Put these on. So they just slide nicely in place. And this one slides in place. And then this goes on. And there you have it. That's a nice little cabinet. And uh, it fits well together. As you can see, you can just clamp it and glue it. And uh, put on, you can see I used different pieces of wood because some of this was just scrap. This is cheaper plywood. This is Baltic birch. But this is just a demo piece. And if I was to finish this cabinet, I would take what I did in this case, which was just cut some nice pieces of cherry, make a face frame, and finish it off. So that's how to make a cabinet. If you, uh, this, this type of cabinet is like for bookcase shelves, anything like that. It's the same technique. And you can just use that uh, same methodology and make your own. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. If you want these formulas or anything like that, I'll share them down below in the video. So thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next video.